Welcome to the Dr. Diane Show, where we explore revolutionary expansion of mind, body, and soul with me, Dr. Diane Hayden. With over 20 years of expertise as a mindset warrior, perspective shifter, and unshakable optimist, I am dedicated to helping you reach your wildest dreams in business, health, performance, and relationships. Learn about the power of thought and how it shapes your life to take risks, change careers, find love, go on adventures, and live passionately with me, Dr. Diane. Get ready for revolutionary ways of thinking, being, and creating an amazing life. The Dr. Diane Show starts now. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Diane Hayden, and you are listening to The Dr. Diane Show on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with us for the next hour, where we will explore revolutionary expansion of mind, body, and soul. Each time on The Dr. Diane Show, we have experts from around the country discussing cutting-edge topics on longevity medicine, natural health, mindset, and soul purpose to help you shift your perspective and become a mindset warrior like me. Today, I'm I'm excited to have Dr. Mark Briner. He is a fellow of the Academy of General Dentistry, a past president and fellow of the International Academy of Oral Medicine and Toxicology, and a diplomat of the College of Dentistry, American Association of Integrative Medicine. A pioneer and recognized authority in biological and holistic dentistry, Dr. Briner has helped patients worldwide find solutions to baffling, unresolved, and seemingly unrelated, but in fact, dental-related health problems. Dr. Briner is the author of Whole Body Dentistry, a complete guide to understanding the impact of dentistry on total health. This award-winning book is a comprehensive and easy-to-understand guide that explains the vital relationship between your mouth and your health. Dr. Briner treats patients for many dental concerns, including aesthetics, temporal mandibular joint dysfunction, sleep breathing disorders, mercury toxicity, hidden infections from cavitations and root canals. If you have unexplained symptoms that won't go away no matter what you do, the answer could be in your mouth, states Dr. Briner. Understanding the vital relationship between the teeth and the rest of the body allows him to provide added levels of diagnosis and care to improve your life. So welcome, Dr. Briner. How are you today? I'm great. How are you, Diane? I am good. I'm good. So I love this topic because there's lots of people out there that I think have probably never even heard of a biological dentist. So let's start there. Like, What inspired you to, to go down that path in terms of dentistry and how can people learn more about it? Well, when I was in the Army, um, after I graduated dental school, I saw patients that had, um, they didn't take care of their mouth, but they didn't have tooth decay and they didn't have gum disease. And I saw other people who were very meticulous in how they took care of their mouth and they still had periodontal problems, they had tooth decay. So I tend to be a curious person and I was saying, you know, why, what's going on here? Why is this happening? And that led me into starting to study nutrition. And from nutrition, one thing led to another. And uh, it becomes all encompassing. You know, you can't, you can't have a healthy mouth without a healthy body or vice versa. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're, we're, we're hearing that more and more. I think more people are realizing the connection between you know, the mouth and the rest of your body or oral health and the rest of your body. But it's pretty fascinating what you just described in terms of what you were seeing in some of these patients that, you know, people who took meticulous care still had issues. And so that led you down this path of basically, you know, studying and pursuing biological and holistic dentistry, which is, which is amazing. And there's not very many of you, many of you across the country, are there? No. Well, I coined the term whole body dentistry um, because truthfully, I think the word holistic and biological is a little overused and it's a little, uh, you just don't know what to make of it. And um, so, because, you know, it's a whole philosophy. It's a whole different way of looking at things. Now, unfortunately, you know, some dentists say they're holistic because they say, okay, I know periodontal disease. If you have periodontal disease, you have higher incidence of heart disease, you have higher incidence of stroke, things like that, or diabetes affects the mouth. But it goes so far beyond that. I mean, you can look at problems, disease, or symptoms as either being general or local. Now, medicine tends to look at things as local. If you have, let's say, a skin problem, 
you go to your primary care, and he says, okay, I'm going to send you to a dermatologist. And then the dermatologist may even send you to a, another special, subspecialist of dermatology for what you have. If you have a prostate problem, they'll send you to a urologist. If you have um, arthritis, they'll send you to a rheumatologist. And they look at it, and all three will treat according to their expertise in this local area. But I look at things as general, disease is general. It's not local. When you have a problem in one area, it's really a problem involving the whole body. And uh, so you, you don't look at it as local. And so when somebody comes in and let's say they have periodontal disease, you can either say, okay, we're going to teach how to brush and floss, take care of your mouth better. And that will have some impact. Okay. But why do they have this? What's made them susceptible? What else is going on with their, their body? Uh, so when I see some paranalysis, I look at it as a general problem. This is just another manifestation, another symptom. And symptoms are not really bad things. They're the body's reaction to whatever is trying to upset it. And, uh, so we'll look at that and, and have various ways of, we can talk about testing and, and various things that I use like homeopathy. Yeah, one of the things I want to point out, I remember just in conversations with you, is what I learned is that um, someone like yourself who practices, you know, whole body dentistry, we'll use that term. I like it better too. Um, you're almost the first, or you are pretty much like the first line of defense. In other, what I mean by that is you're going to pick up on a health problem or a health situation in a person probably before they even realize they have it or even a primary care doctor might be. And that was really shocking to me to think that, wow, a dentist is actually gonna know more about what's going on in the body than if I went to my primary care doctor. And so the reason I'm bringing this up is because so many people are so afraid to go to their dentist and they avoid it. And I am trying to teach people how important it is, not just obviously to take care of your teeth, but for these other things that we're talking about, like you might find a health issue before their regular doctor would. That's possible. I mean, if you, you know, like I say, when you see somebody's paranoid or they're getting decay, you know, what's going on? Like, um, or sometimes it's disclosing things like somebody who's getting a lot of decay. Sometimes we'll find out that that's due to a gluten problem. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, you take a history. My patients fill out a very detailed history. It's like uh, four pages of different types of symptoms. And, you know, people, they have paranalyses. They're going to have a bunch of those things checked off. They're, they're, it's not just confined to bleeding gums and bone loss in the mouth. And the way I approach it is I actually treat the whole body. And I do that with homeopathy is, is the big way. And I use what's called uh, electroacupuncture, according to Bowl, which is an energetic way of testing along acupuncture meridians. And through that, I can kind of get a better assessment of the patient and also find out what kind of toxins uh, are affecting them. I found out every patient who's sick today, unfortunately, is toxic with either heavy metals, with pesticides, with chemicals, with solvents, um, mold. It's uh, so very often, I mean, that's, you know, treating that alone can have a profound impact. But I, I treat at different levels. Uh, every patient looks like an egg to me, I tell them. So, they, you know, the egg you have to shell. And to me, that represents the physical, as are the toxins. That's, let's say, if you have tooth decay, something, you know, if you break your arm, you can set it. It's very physical. It's something that can be taken care of. And uh, the toxins are at the level of the physical. And that using, I find, um, homeopathics and kind of low level, we can help excrete those from the body. And then the other, the other part of the egg is the inner gooey. And that represents the non-physical, the emotional, the spiritual, things that have been passed down generationally. Okay, so 
for their use, it's called classical homeopathy. And that's where we're looking for one homeopathic remedy to help treat the whole constitution of the person, to help them uh, come back to a state of homeostasis. And it's homeopathy is just a beautiful thing. It's all natural. It's all working. Homeopathy is, works at a vibrational level. And uh, you can see amazing things with it. And what you're doing is you're increasing the body's ability to get back to homeostasis to heal itself. Yeah, when we use, so for example, you're, when you talk about homeopathy, something like Arnica, right? Is what Arnica. would be one of the oh, things yeah. you'd be referring to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. yeah it's pretty it's the frequency essentially is what a homeopathic remedy is. It's a frequency and uh, can have pr profound effect. Well, I can tell you that I gave it to my mom post-surgery. Um, after she, she had to have a rod, you know, put down her femur and then pinned to her hip and the hospital and also the rehab center could not believe how quickly she was healing. Mm -hmm. And that's really the only thing that we did outside of, you know, regular supplement, you know, supplements that are going to help as well. But I think it's due to that. And I've used Arnica in the past for many things, inflammation and post-surgery and stuff like that. It's pretty amazing. Right. And it's, that's great. You know, an acute situation. And uh, I wish more people would get into homeopathy, especially if you have children. It's, um, it's when you get to things at an early stage and you treat children constitutionally at an early stage, you keep things from evolving into something else. Um, when, I, when I was young, when I was in probably three years old, I was in the hospital with pneumonia. Uh, after that, every time I'd get a cold, I would have bronchitis. And this went on for years until I got into homeopathy and in my 20s when I was treated by a homeopath. And he essentially erased that from, my, from the memory of my cells uh, because passed down generationally was tuberculosis. My grandmother had had that. And that had imprinted into my cellular matrix, if you will, and once we erase that, I've never had it since. And that's probably, that's going like over 50 years now. So um, that, that's the power of homeopathy. Yeah, it is really, really amazing. And you're talking about epigenetics, which is, we could have a whole nother podcast on that because it's fascinating to me how things get passed down through generations for sure. We've got a lot to talk about with you. Um, you're listening to the Dr. Diane show with me, Dr. Diane Hayden. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll explore more with Dr. Mark Briner, pioneer and recognized authority in biological and holistic dentistry. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're back on the Dr. Diane show with me, Dr. Diane Hayden. Before we continue, I want to make sure everyone knows how to find me. You can reach me at www.drdianehayden.com or either of my two publications, www.naturalnutmeg.com and www.essentialnaples.com. And you can learn more about Dr. Mark Reiner at www.wholebodydentistry.com. That's W-H-O-L-E-B-O-D-Y-D-E-N-T-I-S-T-R-Y.com, Whole Body Dentistry. Com. So welcome back, Dr. Briner. We were talking about epigenetics, which we'll have to pause for another podcast because literally we could spend an hour talking about that. It's pretty fascinating. Um, you, I want to get into a lot of the things that you treat, um, you know, things like uh, TMJ, um, breathing disorders, that kind of thing. Um, but there's, there's, there's a couple of questions that I know people have or are thinking and want me to ask right away. And that is, what is your position on silver fillings? And then what are cavitations and the risk of not treating infections from cavitations? So let's start with silver fillings. What is your philosophy on that? Well, if they're really silver fillings, maybe they wouldn't be as bad, but that that's a marketing ploy. They're really mercury fillings. Yeah. And and because uh, those fillings are 50% mercury, the other half is copper, tin, zinc, and there's some silver thrown in. And, it, and that came into this country in like the 1830s. And even then, 
uh, there was a whole big brouhaha about placing mercury in the mouth. And that's why they, you know, silver sounds a lot better than, than mercury. I had somebody come in, you know, last week and it was like, geez, if I'd known there were mercury fillings, I never would have had them placed, you know, but silver, yeah, that sounds great. And uh, the problem is that that mercury comes off in the vapor form 24 seven. And that can be lethal. I mean, that's coming off, going to all your tissues, going right to your brain and can quite, there's no, there's no amount of mercury that's safe. And um, that mercury that goes to all your cells affects everything. And so you have problems, the research shows, I mean, for mercury causing neurological problems, it causes uh, breathing problems, it causes thyroid problems. I mean, it, causes, it can cause almost anything. And you say, well, how much mercury can be in that little tooth, right? You're not talking about big tooth. Well, your average four foot fluorescent light has about 12 milligrams of mercury. And I don't know if you're aware of it, Diane, but you're not allowed to throw those in the garbage. Mm -hmm. You have to take that fluorescent light and take it to Home Depot or take it to the fire station, somewhere where they'll properly dispose of it because of the mercury. Well, guess how <laughs> much mercury? Yet it's safe to have in your mouth. <laughs> nah, yeah, no. Well, well, <laughs> guess how much mercury is in the average molar filling? If there's 12 milligrams of four foot fluorescent, there's anywhere between 750 and 1,000 milligrams in the average molar. Wow. And like I say, the American Dental Association essentially says the only safe place in the entire universe to store mercury is in somebody's mouth. Classic. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, many, many, I mean, I, I haven't placed a mercury filling, uh, I hate to say it, many years, but over 40 years. And at that time, I figured, geez, you know. They got to they gotta outlaw this soon. You know, another five years, I'm sure it'll be gone. And then five years later, it was like, well, I'm sure in the next five years, this will be gone. And the next, and the ADA just covers it up. And uh, they're just hoping because the newer fillings, which are called composites and which are tooth colored fillings, which are much safer uh, and they bond to your tooth, so they help strengthen your tooth, where the mercury fillings, as they corrode, they start to split your teeth apart, and then you have other problems. Uh, they're just hoping that they'll kind of fade out of use, but in the meantime, you know, you're still, uh, they're still being placed. Uh, in some countries, they're outlawed now in Europe, and they have come around now to say, okay, well, don't place them in pregnant women and kids under 16. Uh, but you know, it's, it's just terrible that, uh, they're still in use at all. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So let's talk about cavitations and the risk of not treating hidden infections from these. Well, a cavitation is an area of the bone where a tooth has been removed, uh, at least in the mouth. You can have cavitations anywhere in, in your bones. Uh, but in the mouth, it's usually an area where a tooth has been removed and the tissue heals over, but the bone doesn't heal. So essentially you have a cavity in the bone. And that can be like a cesspool where you have bacteria, you have mercury, you have fungus, you have viruses, and you have all these things. And usually will occur in the area where you've had wisdom teeth removed. And the problem with, the, uh, with it is First of all, most dentists don't recognize it, and it, it can be hidden. So that, that in itself can cause trouble, because now you can have all sorts of systemic problems going on that are related to it, and nobody's looking for it. Now, I found, like, as a matter of fact, I have a, a patient now that uh, left hip pain, left shoulder pain, left facial pain, and it's all because of cavitation. And um, the ways of treating cavitation are interesting. Years ago, we do, and most people will still treat it by uncovering it and going in and cleaning out the hole, the cavity. Okay, but the problem I found there is the cavitation tunnels, and you have all these little branches going off. Well, you can't clean out all these branches. 
And so what happens is very often you'll do it and they may get some relief because you remove the bolus of infection, but then it's back. So I haven't done a cavitational surgery um, years and years, um, over 20 years probably, because what I find is, again, see, it's not local, it's systemic. So by treating the patient, by taking care of the toxic level, by making their constitution every year, and sometimes we'll inject ozone gas into the cavity to help it heal. We don't have to do surgery and we can heal it. Because I have people coming in, they've had three, four surgeries on a cavitation and they still have the cavitation. So this patient like I had um, with this left hip pain, left shoulder pain, left facial pain, uh, we've injected ozone into there and I've treated her homeopathically and all. And that, that goes, go on and the whole thing and what's interesting often with the gas like when we first do the injection the gas will follow the infection so <clears throat> as you inject this gas into the hole uh it permeates and it burns a little bit and you, you can follow you can feel it like the first time you said oh i can feel it going all the way down to my hip and to my shoulder and subsequently, as we treat her systemically, and then again, say two, three weeks later, inject again, it's like, oh, it's not traveling as far. And then it gets to where it's just very localized and then disappears. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So someone could have hip pain, shoulder pain, and it has nothing to do with an orthopedic problem. Right. Wow. Right. And nobody would ever think that. Uh, not usually. I yeah. mean, you know, I had one a professional golfer who that uh, that was the problem, and uh, took care of that, and he was able to to swing again. Wow. So, uh, yeah, and that's all part of being a whole body dentistry. You got to be a detective, and you got to look at these things. And every tooth on an acupuncture meridian relates different organs and tissues. So you have to be aware of that. Um, for instance, a woman uh, has breast cancer. Very, very, very often, you're gonna find a root canal or a cavitation on that same side as the breast cancer. Really? Wow. Yeah. Matter of fact, um, an oncologist friend of mine, who unfortunately has passed away, and um, physician in Switzerland runs a clinic, they find a root canal on the same side as breast cancer uh, like 99% of the time. And there's, and of course, there's no studies that have been done on that, like to show the correlation because, you know, no one would ever think that that had any, one had anything to do with the other. But it's my, you know, that's what, when I said in the beginning, you know, like you're kind of the first line of defense. It's, it just in the stories that you're telling, it's pretty amazing how connected your teeth and your mouth are to the rest of your body. Yeah, absolutely. And just like a cavitation, a root canal can be a problem. Yeah. Uh, because a root canal is a dead tooth, it's giving off toxins, and <clears throat> it can have all sorts of systemic effects. I mean, the research shows you can cause anything from mental disease to cardi cardiac problems to arthritis. And, you know, nobody's looking, looking at that. And uh, it, it's, another, it's another problem. And, and me, I don't tell people, oh, you have to have your root canals out. What I want my job is to educate them, give them the pros and cons. You know, like one, one young lady at the time, I think she was about 34. She came in, she had an abscess tooth. It's on the breast meridian. So I said to her, uh, breast cancer in your family. And it was like I hit her the two by four. You know, she said, yeah, my mom just passed away from breast cancer and her mother had breast cancer. So I said, well, you know, factoring into what you want to do with this, you need to be aware of the, the connection and the fact that this is on the breast meridian. So she elected to remove that tooth and she's still a patient like 25 years later. And thank God, you know, she's been fine and, and healthy. Wow. I mean, it is, and there's the whole epigenetics, you know, thing that you were talking about as well. I mean, it's just, you know, passed from one 
generation to the next and it kind of like lives in your cells it's just mm -hmm. really really it's just fascinating to me just how i mean how the body works not only in terms of just how it adapts but how it might be more you know prone to certain diseases based on epigenetics and how you might actually be be more e it might be more easy for you to heal something as well based on that as well so we're going to get into a lot more. You're listening to the Dr. Diane Show with me, Dr. Diane Hayden. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking more with Dr. Mark Reiner, pioneer and recognized authority in biological and holistic dentistry. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're back on the Dr. Diane Show with me, Dr. Diane Hayden, and I am talking today with Dr. Mark Reiner pioneer and recognized authority in biological and holistic dentistry. You can learn more about Dr. Briner at www.wholebodydentistry.com. That's H-O-W-H-O-L-E-B-O-D-Y-D-E-N-T-I-S-T-R-Y.com. And so welcome back, Dr. Briner. We were talking about all kinds of fascinating things and, uh, one question I had for you, because I actually have had bonding done, is all of the aesthetic type of treatments that people have done, porcelain veneers, dental body, dental bonding. How do you see that? Do you see that um, contributing in one way or another or any kind of like detriment to overall health? But how does that affect basically, you know, our teeth and, and someone's mouth? Well, I think it's very important. Uh aesthetics uh person you know studies show that a person uh has a lot tied up in their smile they feel better if they have a nice smile um so i think uh, creating a you know beautiful smile is important psychologically it has a big impact using fillings that are all tooth colored it's nice when somebody opens their mouth, you don't see a bunch of uh, black fillings. But especially, you know, the smile. Now, that, that being said, um, there are certain things I think people need to look out for. I try to be as conservative as possible. So if when you're doing, let's say, veneers in the front of the mouth, there are two ways to do that. You are, well, <clears throat> either you can do crowns where you're cutting teeth down. I tend to stay away from crowns in any part of the mouth if I can. I, that's the last resort for me. Because when you do a crown, you have to mutilate that tooth. You increase the odds that could die and have, need a root canal. And then the person's faced with the dilemma of what do I do? Um, and then if you're doing veneers, there are two types of veneers. One veneer is you're doing kind of like a three-quarter crown which is much more invasive than doing another type of veneer, which is almost like a contact lens over the tooth. And the preparation of the tooth is very minimal. Um, so wherever possible, in order to get the proper aesthetic result, I would rather go with kind of contact lens type of veneer. Um, the the impact of, now, interesting, because though in, in whole body dentistry, you have to take the whole person to account. So let's say I had um, this uh, TV star come in and she had a root canal in the front tooth. And this, when I tested, was negatively impacting her health. And that happens to be on the meridian for the ovaries, and she had a history of ovarian cancer. So now what do you do? She has a lot invested in this beautiful smile that she has. And, you know, she's a, a TV star. And the thought of, for her to say, of taking this tooth out, that, that would have more of a devastating impact probably than, than the root canal. So because, so again, being on a meridian, what you do is treat the whole body and make sure that that meridian is as strong as can be by treating it with the homeopathic treatment and getting toxins out of the body so that the effect of that becomes minimized. So you have to take everything into consideration. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, obviously, 
you want um I think we all realize now just the effects of, you know, emotional stress and all of that on someone. And, you know, we're talking about when we talk about aesthetics, you know, people, <laughs> it might seem like, oh, that's superficial and, you know, you're just being vain or, or whatnot. But I mean, it could affect her career. So, you know, I could totally see how that makes a huge difference in determining how, you know, how you would treat and going down a different avenue for sure. Um so that's it, just it, like interesting stuff for sure. Stuff that yeah. I think people wouldn't normally would normally think about. Um, we've I read a lot about uh, biological dentists, whole body dentists, being able to you know know whether someone has sleep apnea or sleep breathing disorders. So let's talk a little bit about that because I don't think the average person would think, oh, how would my dentist know? you know, what my sleep habits are, but you do know based on looking at someone's mouth. Well, yeah. Well, for one thing, I have a um, cone beam scan in the office. So all new patients get a three-dimensional uh, x-ray of their head and neck. And very often what you'll find is the airway is like a pipette. Mm. And so let's say the airway, you know, as you, as you come down through your nose, you come down in here. Uh, when you take a three-dimensional measurement, let's say of down in this area, should be, let's say, 200 millimeters squared in that area. Well, I might find somebody with one that's 50 or 60. Wow. And, um, and what happens is that x-ray is taken with them standing up. Well, you take someone like that, you say, what position do you sleep in? And they say, well, I sleep on my side. Or sleep. They can't sleep on their back because what happens is that tongue is a big obstructor for the airway. And if they sleep on their back and they have a narrow airway, usually gravity is going to take it and completely cut off their, their air supply. So um, that's one way of assessing it. And what I'll do is I'll send patients to... Um, you know, to have a sleep study. And uh, you find out one, that they snore, that they don't wake up refreshed. Very often uh, a sign is grinding or clenching the teeth. So what happens very often, we'll see on the, the teeth at the gum line of the tooth, it'll be kind of like you're sawing a tree down. There'll be uh, notches in the teeth, which comes from grinding or clenching a lot. Uh, they may have um, uh, reflux, which is another sign very often of uh, sleep breathing disorders. And uh, people who, you know, fall asleep in front of the TV, they get drowsy reading. We have them, uh, we have a form that assesses that. So there are all different ways uh, dentally of looking at that and, you know, just looking in the mouth. And you, very often what you're going to also see are the jaws are very narrow. There'll be a lot of crowding. They could be um, very high palates, the roof of the mouth, and uh, imprints on the tongue because the tongue doesn't have enough room. And sometimes that becomes a, a good way to treat sleep apnea is just by having the jaws widened to allow the tongue more room because the tongue is like a, a waterbed. So, you know, in a waterbed, if you sit down on one side, the other side goes up. So the tongue, as it's gone and, and now it's squished in, in the mouth, if you widen the jaws, as the tongue then can spread out, it comes out from the back of the, of the mouth and the airway and gives more room to breathe. And that's, so some people like can't stand you know, using a CPAP machine, they just won't do it. <laughs> Most and, people. <laughs> yeah. So, so two de two ways dentally of treating the problem are expansion of the jaws, or the other one is to wear an appliance that actually moves your lower jaw forward. They sleep with it and holds your jaw forward so that the tongue comes forward and out of the airway. So how would you, I'm listening to this and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, none of this sounds like pleasant. How do you widen someone's jaw? Uh, with appliances. Yeah. That, that so similar to like orthodontics. Goes in the mouth and uh, 
there's a screw and you turn it every, you know, four or five days and, and slowly you widen the jaws. That's why it's best when you're young, yeah. if your jaws are narrow, have treated when you're young. And if uh, you're tongue tied, if a child is tongue tied, that should be addressed. Because what happens, the tongue is a fantastic orthodontic instrument. And that is what goes up on the roof of your mouth and allows it to fully develop. And if you're tongue tied, the tongue can't get to the roof of the mouth. So usually those are the people then that very narrow jaws. Very often it's because they're tongue tied. Interesting. Interesting. I, I think I, I don't know if it was you who told me or I read this in an article somewhere also. Your jaw can be narrow if you weren't breastfed. Is that true? Well, yeah. Breastfeeding helps develop the jaw also. Yep. Yep. That's, it's, that's so interesting too. Again, another thing that some, that a mother probably would, would never even think of that that might affect, you know, like not breastfeeding might affect her child's jaw, which then might lead to all these other things that we're talking about. Right. And sometimes, you know, a woman can't breastfeed because the baby won't latch on. And very often that's because of a tongue tie situation. Hmm. So that's something, you know, to have evaluated if that's a problem. Yep. Yep. Awesome. What is your opinion on Invisalign? Invisalign uh, has its pros and cons. Now, if you just want to straighten your teeth, uh, very often you can do it with Invisalign. Um, the problem that I potentially find is that if you have a TMJ problem, this temporomandibular joint, that uh, people get their teeth straightened uh, with Invisalign, but they are not addressing the temporomandibular joint problem. So you can end up with a nice aesthetic effect, but you're still having the problems with the fact that your jaws aren't aligned properly. And that can lead be a, a, a reason for a person having chronic headaches, uh, tinnitus, neck aches, shoulder aches, back aches, um, all sorts of problems like that. So uh, vertigo, you know, there can be a lot of problems. So my, my only uh, worry is when, and unfortunately, orthodontists don't take into consideration the, the joint temporomandibular joint most don't right. uh, and and that's that's something else that's important you know it's really interesting because that this joint here when it's out of not right it affects your entire autonomic nervous system oh let's talk about that we got to take a quick we got to go to break real quick you're listening to the dr diane show when we come back we will talk more with dr mark Breiner. stay tuned we'll be right back We're back on the Dr. Diane show with me, Dr. Diane Hayden. I'm talking today with Dr. Mark Breiner, pioneer and recognized authority in biological and holistic dentistry. You can learn more about him at www.wholebodydentistry.com. That's W-H-O-L-E-B-O-D-Y-D-E-N-T-I-S-T-R-Y.com. And you can learn more about me at www.drdianehayden.com. So, Dr. Breiner, before we finish, just quickly, I know you were talking about, uh, before we went to break, you were talking about um, TMJ. I just want to make sure we kind of rooted back to that. Um, anything else that you wanted the, you know, our listeners to know? Well, a person can um, check some things by themselves. In other words, if they like put their fingers in their ears and they open and close, are they getting a click? Are they getting sounds of rustling leaves? Very often that could be a sign of uh, problems in the joint. If they're having um, a lot of headaches, if they're having uh, problems even when they're flying with their ears, because that's right in front of the ears. If they're having problems with vertigo uh, and especially neck aches, headaches, shoulder aches, back aches can all very much be related to TMJ. So that, you know, if you have those problems and you can't figure it out, as something to be evaluated. Um, if you have a very deep overbite where your front teeth come deeply over your lower teeth, usually you're gonna have a 
TMJ problem because it's forcing, you're wedging your jaw back. Um, and sometimes, you know, it's amazing because in the office we can sometimes put a, a bite in the mouth, just a temporary bite to reposition the jaw. And the patient will sit for 10 minutes and it's like, geez, you know, my, my head is clear, my neck doesn't hurt, I have more range of motion. Um, they get them walk, they say, you know, my walking is better because as if this is off, your hips can be off. So it's all, it's all related. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. Which is why you wrote a whole book, Whole Body Dentistry, A Complete Guide to Understanding the Impact of Dentistry on Total Health, which is a fantastic book. I recommend people get that. Um, do they contact you? How can people get a hold of your book? Uh, they can get it on Amazon. Amazon, perfect. Okay, okay. So what inspired you to write the book? Well, what inspired me to write the book was to give this information to the public. Um, dentists really <laughs> aren't very interested in it. Mm -hmm. They, uh, you know, people they just want to keep doing what they're doing. And I thought it was important because, again, because I feel that the term holistic is being used too often. Um, and people are going to somebody and they're not really holistic. You know, it's, they're using that as a marketing term at this point. So I thought by presenting this information to the public, they can interview the dentist and say, you know, what, what about cavitations? Most of the time, the dentist will say, I don't know anything about a cavitation. And um, so this allows the public to be able to know what questions to ask and to think about what, when somebody's saying you need this treatment, you know, do I really need this treatment? Unfortunately, um, I find there's too much dentistry being done. I find, uh, like I say, to me, it, uh, if you've had a big so-called silver filling in your mouth and it's been there for 25 years and now you wanna remove it and they say, well, to remove that, you need a crown. See, in my mind, it's like, well, wait a minute that lasted 25 years, I can do a better restoration with the bonded fillings we have. Why do I need to cut that whole tooth down and increase the odds of something going wrong with it? Because I can do this bonded filling that will strengthen the tooth. And I don't have to cut the tooth down. Um, you know, when somebody says you need a root canal, okay, well, what are the pros and cons of that? what Meridian is on. And in the book, we have the, the chart that shows all the relationships. Um, you know, somebody says, you need a lot of uh, deep cleanings with your, your, your gums are bleeding. You know, well, what's, what's the story with that? You know, fortunately I find um, insurance is a big problem. Insurance tends to skew everything. So, uh, you know, like dentists will say, oh, you need fluoride treatments because they get good compensation for fluoride treatments. Or, you know, you need four deep scalings. And unfortunately, I've seen people come in there told, you know, it's $2,000, you need four deep scalings or six deep scalings. And I check them out and their gums are fine. They don't need that. They need, they need one visit with the hygienist. And I use a microscope, so we take a plaque sample from under the gum, look under the microscope to see it truly, you know, are the gums healthy and, and the underlying, you know, their underlying problems that are kind of like silent. Um, and I find very often they don't, they don't need it. So, and one good thing that's happened, uh, some people go to the dentist and they say, here, read this book. So I've had some, met some dentists at meetings come up to me and say, you know, thank you very much for writing the book. A patient gave me the book. It's changed my whole perspective on things. So. Wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. I mean, yeah, to impact your, you know, your peers as well is fantastic because more, well, I mean, we speak the same language. I, I wish there were more of you. We need to clone you <laughs> <laughs> and get more of you out there. So. 
Uh, we have a couple minutes left, but I'm 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 going to dive into this subject. What is your? Well, I'll just ask it. Are there dental problems associated, or have you seen anything any problems associated with the COVID vaccine? Yes. You know, one of the uh, big side effects from the spike protein, uh, be it from COVID or from the vaccine, and especially the vaccine, are clots. And so what's happening, we're finding in the mouth, is people will come in and they have a toothache and a perfectly healthy tooth, can't figure out what's going on. Um, well, well, sometimes what it is is that tooth has had a heart attack uh, because there's been some microclotting and it's affecting the, uh, the tooth. And also facial pain. People are reporting substantial, seeing substantial increase in cases of facial pain, of uh, bone necrosis, where your bone, areas of your bone have died, leading to uh, like a cavitation, but can be even worse. And, um, and this is again, what's happening again, these microclots. And, you know, the spike proteins find, affect the nerves. So you're seeing more trigeminal neuralgia, more nerve, facial nerve problems. And uh, this is all, you know, world surgeons have reported um, that since the vaccine, they're just seeing a big increase in these types of cases. Yeah. Well, I don't doubt it, among other things, for sure. Um, well, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for all your amazing information. Again, uh, your book is called Whole Body Dentistry, A Complete Guide to Understanding the Impact of Dentistry on Total Health. And your website is www.wholebodydentistry.com. And I'm sure that people will be reaching out to you to learn more for sure. Uh, Dr. Briner is based in, it's Fairfield, right, Connecticut? Yes. Yep, has a practice there and uh, does many talks and is just a great, great resource for us. So thank you so much for all the great information. Happy You're to have right. you here. Yeah, and I want to thank, awesome. I want to thank all of you for tuning into the Dr. Diane Show. Join me the first and third Thursdays at 11 Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific. Next time we'll be discussing more about the power of thoughts and beliefs and the impact they have on your life. Have a great week and I'll see you back here next time. Thank you for tuning into the Dr. Diane Show, revolutionary expansion of mind, body, and soul with me, Dr. Diane Hayden. Tune in every Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Center your thoughts on what you want and shut the door on every suggestion of fear, worry, or lack from your own consciousness or the consciousness around you. Once you master that, everything is possible. To learn more about me, Dr. Diane, and receive a free digital subscription of my magazine, visit naturalnutmeg.com.